Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Cesium for Unreal tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll be setting up some custom pawns, including a third-person character and a vehicle to explore a photogrammetry model of Denver. This video assumes that you've gone through the previous tutorials in the series, so if anything is unfamiliar, you can refer to those earlier videos or to the written documentation on the website. So let's get started by jumping into Unreal Engine. We'll start with a new level that I've called Custom Pawns. And then we will add a cesium sun sky from the cesium for unreal content folder. And we'll also add an, an instance of the cesium world terrain plus Bing Maps aerial imagery. Then we can go over to the cesium geo reference and then select sun sky to the cesium sun sky to fix the black band issue. Now we're ready to add the Aerometrics Denver photogrammetry. 3D tile set to our scene. If we go over to add on the cesium menu, we'll find that we don't see that tile set listed here. This is because in our cesium ions my assets list, we haven't added the Denver photogrammetry data set to our list yet. So if we go over to the asset depot, the first option is the one we're looking for, and then we can add it to our assets. We can agree to the terms of service and you'll see that in the My Assets page, it's updated with this new tile set. We can go back over to Unreal, close this asset page, and then reopen it by clicking the Add button. And now we can add the Aerometrics Denver Photogrammetry 3D tile set to our scene. Next, we need to set the GeoReference origin to downtown Denver. There's a couple ways to do this. And the first one is to double click on the actor or press F to focus the actor in our viewport camera. And then you would go over to the cesium geo reference and then select place geo reference origin here. The other way to do this is to manually set the longitude, latitude, and height coordinates here. In this case, we want to set the origin to a very specific location, Union Station inside downtown Denver. So we'll use this manual method. If we go over to the tutorial page, we'll see the necessary coordinates for setting the georeference origin to that position. And I'll paste them right here. Next, we want to travel to where this position actually is. We can do that quickly by going to cesium sun sky and then zeroing out the location. This will set the location of the cesium sun sky actor to the new georeference point. So now if we double click on the cesium sun sky, it'll take us exactly where we want to go, which is in front of Union Station. We can also notice that the cesium world terrain is clipping through at some points above the photogrammetry data set. In order to remedy this, we can raise the photogrammetry asset by about 600 units in the Z direction. Now we're ready to import custom pawns into the scene and control them at runtime. So we'll want to go over to the content browser and then click on add slash import, add feature or content pack. We'll want to select the third person pack and then add it to the project. If you don't see anything in this window, that's probably because you don't have feature packs installed for your version of Unreal Engine. In order to remedy that, you'll want to go over to the Epic Games Launcher and go over to your library, go to the Options, and then select Templates and Feature Packs. Now, after we've added the third-person feature pack, we can see that there are four new folders inside our game's content folder. Now we can add the third-person character to our world. There are two ways to do this. The first way is just dragging and dropping the character into our scene. But the second way is a little bit better practice and that's what we'll do here. We'll delete this character and instead we'll drag a new player start out into our scene. We'll make sure it's oriented towards the train station. And then we need to set the game mode for this level to the third person game mode. The third person game mode came included in that feature pack we just added. 
and basically just sets the default player pawn to the third person character. If we zoom in on the player start, you may notice that it says bad size. This usually occurs when the collision capsule for the player start is intersecting with the world. You can press W to switch to the move widget, bring it up a little bit, and then press end, which snaps it to the world surface. Now we can test this out by pressing play. You'll see that the actor has fallen through the photogrammetry surface and onto the world terrain surface. This is because 3D tile sets can be quite large and they have to be streamed to Unreal Engine, so they can take a moment to fully load. If you have actors that begin simulating right away, like our player character with gravity, then they may fall through the world. In order to fix this, we'll be placing some geometry to ensure a safe spawn point. So if we go over back to our player start, we're going to drag in a new cube onto our scene. We'll set the scale of this cube to 4, 4, and 0 0.5. And then we'll move it until it's just underneath the sidewalk surface. And then we can position it underneath the character. In order to make sure it's fully hidden at runtime, we can go over to the settings down here and then select actor hidden in game. Now, if you press play, the character should stay in place. As a brief note about placing actors, I'll mention for now that once you've placed actors into your level, you don't want to change the cesium georeference origin afterwards. Changing the origin will result in all actors moving to the same relative location, but at the new origin. In the next two tutorials, we'll learn more about this and explore ways to safely georeference all placed assets to overcome this constraint. But for now, let's move on and we'll add an additional vehicle to our level. Again, we're going to add a feature pack by going over and selecting add feature or content pack. And this time we'll add vehicle advanced. Then you can drag out the vehicle blueprint onto your level in front of the player character. We'll also want to duplicate this cube so that the vehicle doesn't fall through our level as well. If we click Alt and then drag on one of these arrows, it'll create a duplicate copy of this cube. And then we can place it under like so. Now we need to set up a way to switch between the two pawns at runtime. In order to do this, we'll write some blueprint code in our level blueprint. We can open up the level blueprint by going to blueprints and then open level blueprint. And the first thing we need to do is store a reference to that third person character that spawned at runtime so we can switch back to it when we've started possessing our vehicle. So in order to store that reference, we're going to go over to begin play and right click and type in get player pawn. Then we can right click on this and promote it to a variable. We can call this variable default player pawn. And we can drag out from the begin play to this set node. Now we'll set up some keyboard inputs to switch between the two pawns. For this tutorial, we'll set the keyboard C input to possess the third person character, and we'll set the V key to possess the vehicle. So we'll do the third person character first, and we'll want to right click on a free section and type in keyboard C. And then we'll get a reference to the player controller. And we'll drag out from the output pin and search for unpossess. Then we'll call the player controller to possess the default player pawn reference. We search for possess and then connect the two pins. We can then drag out the default player pawn into the input pin for this function. Now we'll set up the input for controlling the vehicle. So we'll go over and right click and search for keyboard V. And then we can copy this function. And then create another call to the possess function. This time, instead of the default player pawn, 
we're going to drag out a reference to the vehicle blueprint. And we'll connect it to the in pawn input. Now we can compile and save our level blueprint. And then press play. If we press the V key, we can control our vehicle. Now you may note that if you switch back to the player, you can see that the vehicle has disappeared through the world. This is because the tiles that the vehicle was on top of had unloaded from the scene. This can happen when the vehicle is far away from the player, or if frustum calling is enabled, it can happen even when you look away from the car. We'll explain what frustum calling is in a little bit. But what we want to do to remedy this is disable physics on the vehicle when we're not controlling it. We can do this by going back to our level blueprint. What we need to do is create a new set simulate physics node. If you notice, it's automatically created the getter function to get access to the mesh. So let's just connect those two execution pins. And when we're controlling the vehicle, we want physics to be enabled. So we can press the check mark here. But in the other case, we want physics to be disabled. So we can copy these nodes and paste them here and connect up the execution pin. And for this one, we want to set simulate to false. If we compile and save, and then try pressing play in the editor, If we can switch over to the vehicle, drive off, and if we switch back to the player, the vehicle should still be in our scene. And we can look away and look back and it's still there. Now let's take a look at two settings to tune performance with Cesium for Unreal. With the Aerometrics Denver Photogrammetry actor selected, let's look at the level of detail category, where we'll find a setting called Maximum Screen Space Error. This controls the level of detail of the 3D tile set. Screen space error is the error in screen pixels that you see when viewing a tile at a level of detail lower than its full resolution. A higher number means a higher maximum screen space error, which corresponds to better performance because tiles are being displayed at lower levels of detail. On the other hand, if we lower the screen space error, we see more detail. So if we try lowering it to two here, which means a much higher resolution, we'll see that the visual quality of our data set improves. But this also comes with a trade-off of longer load times and a likely performance hit. You may also notice that tiles that are out of view stop rendering and can take a moment to load again when you turn around. To change this, we want to open the tile calling section and then take a look at the enable frustum calling checkbox. If we disable this setting, this means that tiles are no longer unloaded as we look away. However, you may notice that the overall quality of tiles may drop. You'll want to decide the best values for these two settings, maximum screen space error and enable frustum calling based on your performance requirements. That's all for this tutorial. In the next one, we'll do a deep dive on placing objects in Cesium for Unreal levels. As always, if you have questions, feedback, or feature requests, let us know over on the Cesium Community Forums by pressing the help icon. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.